let me read the question. It says, assuming bicycle tires are perfectly flexible and support the weight of a rider by pressure alone. Oh, yeah. I calculate the total area of tires in contact with the ground. If a bicycle and rider have a total mass of some total mass and the gauge pressure in the tires is this. Um, so for the purpose of this question, really the, the phrase gauge pressure, it's trying to help you. Because when you're trying to think of absolute pressure in the tire, you'd have to think about, oh, there's an atmospheric pressure that's pressing in and you gotta factor that in. Um, when you have gauge pressure, it's basically a way um, if you are dealing with the gauge pressure, you can ignore the atmospheric pressure. It's already been taken into account. This is telling you how much over the atmospheric pressure the tires are inflated by. So whatever amount the atmosphere is pressing in with, it's already been taken care of. We don't need to worry about it. So uh, with that, so I guess this is the kind of the picture that they're trying to um, draw for you. So let me draw a front view of the bicycle. Uh, which will be dominated by the wheels. So this is my front view of the bicycle wheel. And imagine there's some kind of things going up, a uh, handlebar, and there's a rider who's riding on top. I don't know, I can't draw these things. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, if you imagine the whole assembly here, the rider and the bicycle, the whole thing is, you know, pressing down. If you imagine drawing free body diagram, there's the weight um, um, of the whole thing. Mass times G, that's a pressing down on the whole thing. Uh, it's not accelerating downward, so something must be, um, something must be uh, supporting the thing up. And that something is, is the contact force with the ground. There's a normal force that's uh, pushing up the whole assembly and supporting the weight. And this is what, it, uh, what the question means. Um, the, you know, support the weight of the bicycle and rider by pressure alone. Because this tire, if it's like most tires, it's filled with air. So um, it's not as though there's some solid structure that can uh, transfer this normal force directly. There's an air gap. Uh, between the the outer layer of tire and the inner rigid structure of the bicycle, and what it's saying is that this inner gap is made to maintained by that air pressure. So, um, with all that uh, kind of answer here is a simple. Um, you know how much this normal force must be. It must be equal to the the force of the weight, so that it kind of balances everything out. And for this normal force to come from pressure, uh, pressurized tube, the uh, pressure of this um, tube uh, bicycle wheel alone, um, this amount of force must be equal to the pressure in the tube, let me call that gauge pressure, times the contact area. So. That's it. Um, so you solve this for area, that'll get you an answer there, and we are done. Yeah, so, so let me work out that answer. The expression for area will be the weight, uh, mg, divided by the pressure. I think I have everything here. And the way the units are given, I will end up with the area in the unit of uh, square meter. And so let me get the answer in square meter and then I'll convert to a, a square centimeter. Um, so the weight of the whole thing is going to be 76 kilograms times uh, 9.8 meter per second squared for G divided by the pressure, uh, four times 10 to the power of five. Uh, by the way, there's this nice thing about E notation is it takes the highest precedence. So, um, so if I were trying to write this like uh, four times 10 to the power of five, I would need a uh, parenthesis here uh, to make sure that this multiplication takes place before division does. Um, if I do four E5, then 
this is just a number. So uh, this uh, this E5 has a higher um, presence if you want to think about it that way than this division. So it'll just work out. One of the things you might sometimes have to watch out. So that's the answer in um, square meters. Now I want the answer in uh, square uh, centimeter. So one way to do that is I can do a unique conversion. So I can multiply this um, whole quantity imagine, or imagine multiplying by a factor of one. And by one, I mean a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are the same physical quantity. So why do you want to do that? Um, but when you have units included, you can construct those same physical quantities in such a way that they will get rid of the units you don't want and introduce the units you do want. So to, to get rid of the meter that I don't want, I want meter on the denominator. And meter and centimeters are both a unit of length. So I can introduce a centimeter on top and I have to be careful to construct this ratio to be one. So let's say one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Now, if you just do this multiplication, you won't be done because you have meter squared. I need to get rid of two factors of meter. So what I need to do is take this and square it. Then when I do the multiplication, meters will cancel out and I'll be left with a centimeter squared. So, so numerical in numerical terms, all I do is um, the, to the number I had before, I multiply the whole thing by 100 squared. Then I'm done. Okay, 18.6 centimeters squared. Yeah. And um, uh, let's see, do I want to talk about it more? Um, well, one of the things that if if you like ride a bicycle or uh, compare bicycle tire to car tire, something you might notice is that uh, this the kind of the gauge pressure in the tires you see, it's higher for thinner uh, wheels. Um, like uh, when you compare, for example, a road bike to mount mountain bike, the the pressure to which you have to pressurize a road bike is higher because road bikes are thinner. So you need a higher pressure inside to support the basically same weight. And when you compare like uh, amount of pressure in a bicycle wheel with a, a car, automobile wheel, automobile wheels are actually pressurized to, to a lower pressure. And the reason for that is those are nice and thick tires, uh, four of them. So even though it's supporting greater weight, you and the car, the amount of pressure that's needed to produce the that greater force is actually less. So that's why the car tires are, I think my Honda Civic is pressurized to like 30, 40 PSI. Um, and when I used to have a bicycle, it was pressurized to 60, 70 PSI. So yeah, not relevant to the question, but <laughs> well, this is a place where it'll be as relevant as it can be. <laughs>